Prophet is being warned when people come to you and you give them a verdict, make sure that you don't fall into their feelings. Now it's not to say that the Quran doesn't care about how you feel. The Quran actually is very concerned with the sadness of people, with the pain of people. Allah would even sometimes give revelation and say, I gave this revelation so it would, it would give cleansing and it would give healing to the heart, to the feelings of a believing group of people. Sometimes Allah will give us revelation just to give us comfort. And there are many occasions of that in the, in the Quran and the Sunnah. But the shaitan's job is to actually change, take everything beautiful and make it ugly. And to take everything ugly and make it beautiful. So the, the deen of Allah, the, the laws of Allah, actually came to protect us from the harm we can do to ourselves. Our, you know, just like a child, right? A child does, has uncontrolled emotions, uncontrolled desires. If, you should, if, if a child likes chocolate and they have the feeling that they want to eat chocolate all day, and you say, well, that makes them feel good, just keep giving it to them, you're killing this child. You're causing their dental problems. You're causing them to have stomach aches. You're hurting them because you're following their feelings. Well, in a larger sense, human beings can be childish. Human beings can actually act like their feelings are, all I care about is how, what I want to do. Just l let me be happy. Doesn't matter what the word of Allah says. And when we do that, we're, we're actually causing harm to ourselves. So what Allah does is He says sometimes, He teaches us that sometimes our own feelings are actually the biggest danger to ourselves. Their biggest danger to ourselves, you know. He says, The one who feared standing in front of his master and was able to stop them, their own self from getting, from running into one feeling after the other. Like they, they stopped their whims from dictating all of their actions. You know, in, in the world of marketing, I've given you this example before. When I was in business school, in the world of marketing, we studied like grocery stores. Right? And in grocery stores, they, the way they lay them out, to this day, I, mean, I studied it in like 1875, but whatever. Now, even nowadays, it's the same. When you go into a grocery store, most people go to the grocery store to get some milk, some eggs, and some bread. So you would think it's logical that they should put the milk, eggs, eggs and bread right at the entrance. So people can come, grab it, and go to the cash register. But they put the milk, bread, and eggs all the way on the farthest end, as far away from the entrance as possible. And the reason they do that is they want you to go through all of these products and your feeling will come, eh, I should just grab that. I should just put that in here too. Put that in here too. Put that in here too. They, they, they're hoping your whims dictate your judgments. They're hoping for that, you know. And then the, you'll notice that at the cash, at the exit, it's the most unhealthy products that taste the, the, the sweetest are right there at the cash register. Because as you leave, just follow your taste. Put some more candy in there. Put some Tic Tacs in there, put some Twix or chocolate or whatever in there. You, you see that? So the idea is that human beings, by and large, we have a feeling, we just want to act on it. Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us otherwise. He teaches us to control our emotions. So He says, He tells us to His Prophet, the first warning is when you give them their judgments, don't make your judgments bend to their feelings. Don't make them, the judgments that Allah has given are already taking into, the, into consideration what's best for you, based on your feelings even. He knows better about us than we know about ourselves. In one place in the Quran, Allah even says, Allah You're gonna teach Allah your religion. You know better than Allah. Because sometimes we hear something Allah wants us to do, and our immediate response is, but, but what about? And our, there's a, need, a counter in our head, no. No, give me something else, that wasn't, that's not what I feel like. It doesn't feel like it's uh, good for me. Our feelings are stronger than even the word of Allah. We have counters to it. So he says, he warns him first of all, don't let them fall, don't fall into their whims. Then he says, وَحْذَرْهُمْ And then he says, be careful about them. Watch out for them. And these are the people of the book that are coming and asking the Prophet ﷺ questions about revelation, but also anybody who comes and asks him. He says, be careful of the ones who ask you, because the ones who come to the religion, sometimes they become a majority or they become a huge number of people. And then they say, you know what? We, don't, we want this religion to fit in with the majority's opinion. We want everybody is more comfortable if the verdict of Islam was this way or that way. So let's just have enough people that can lobby and we can change the law of Allah just a little bit or interpret it a little bit differently so it fits in better with our community. It fits in better with our comfort, uh, uh, with our comfort zone. 
But let's reinterpret all of this because we're not so comfortable with the old way of looking at things. So he says, وَحْذَرْهُمْ And then he teaches us in the scariest part, the warning to the Prophet ﷺ, and therefore to us when we seek answers in our religion. He says, أَنْ يَفْتِنُوكَ عَنْ بَعْضِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ that they might actually put you into trial regarding some of the things Allah has revealed to you. They start testing you about some of Allah's revelation. In other words, somebody says, let me put it this way. You know, when you're shopping, for example, if you're shopping for a home, you're like, I like the neighborhood. I like the first floor. I'm not so sure about the second floor. I like all of this, I don't like this. Or when you order food from a, a restaurant, you like most of what's on the plate, you leave some of the salad behind, you're like, oh, I'm not crazy about the salad. In other words, you pick, you pick. You don't like everything, you like some parts. You take some parts. And we become consumers of the parts we like most. And we bring that attitude like a consumer to the religion and say, I like the prayers. Those, those are pretty good in Islam. But this whole, this whole riba thing, I'm not, you know, it's a little too inconvenient. And this whole like, pro, these certain prohibitions on our diet, that's a little too much. And this is haram and that's, that's I don't know, and this is, this is mandatory also. And these inheritance laws, I don't, you know, I, if, we, if we follow these inheritance laws, then I have to give my brother an equal share as myself, but I don't like my brother, nobody likes my brother. Let's keep him out of the inheritance. So let's not follow, we, we can follow other parts of the law, but there are some parts of the law we're not comfortable with, so let's leave those alone. And you know what people do? People come up with the, the greatest scam. They say, we're gonna ignore the word of Allah when it comes to money. We're gonna come, ignore the word of Allah when it comes to certain halal and haram. But we'll go to Umrah every year. And we'll take pictures at the Kaaba, selfies with the haram behind us. Because on Judgment Day, we're gonna collect those, right? So we're gonna take, take a picture at the haram, you know, put ihram on and show people how spiritual you are. Because that's really important. That's why we go there, to take pictures. Do that, so that you feel good that you at least do something for Islam, while at the same time violating the major teachings of the religion. You know? And what people do in, in any religion, in, in the psychology of religion, Allah describes this in Surah An-Nisa. He says, إِن تَجْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَنُدْخِلْكُمْ مُدْخَلًا كَرِيمًا He says, if you can stay away from the major sins, then the smaller ones Allah will overlook. The smaller ones you make istighfar, Allah will overlook. You know what people do? They do the smaller good deeds while they want to hold on to major sins. And they say, well, since I'm doing these smaller good deeds, you tell yourself, then these major sins, Allah will overlook that. Because look, look at what I'm doing. At least I'm memorizing a surah. At least I came to Ramadan. At least I did that. Like you decide and I decide what part of the word of Allah, what we're going to offer Allah, is up to us. We decide what the priorities are. That's not how this religion works. That actually starts to redefine our entire relationship with Allah. Allah is the master. We are the slaves. The master tells us what's important and what's not. The master tells us what's the mandatory requirement and what is the extra activity. The master tells us what's absolutely impermissible and what's okay. He decides that. We don't get to negotiate that on our terms.